This is the city, Los Angeles, California. Like every other city, it has its parks. And like parks and park benches everywhere, these are green, comfortable spots for sunbathing and quiet conversation. This one's a little different, Hollywood Park, where they're off and running five days a week. There are few benches or quiet conversations here, and everything green doesn't grow on trees. The Spaniards introduced horse racing to the city in the late 1700s. In no time, it became the featured event at most county fairs. By the early 1900s, it was the third largest industry in the state. Hollywood Park opened its gates in 1938, exhibiting one of the most beautiful racetracks in the world. Here, horses and jockeys compete for split-second fortunes. It's properly named the Sport of Kings. This year at Hollywood Park alone, over $170 million will ride on the tote boards. With an average daily attendance of 30,000 people, there'll be a lot of winners. For the others, losing may become a habit. In my job, I meet a lot of losers. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. the special investigation unit out of detective headquarters. The boss is Captain Didion. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Special investigations unit under Lieutenant Dan Bowser is composed of 16 officers drawn from the detective division. Its purpose is to work on any crime of sufficient magnitude or to assist on request any division in the city. 10 a.m. we were on our way to a meeting with a man who had been given the code name Black 10. There was good reason to protect his identity. Black 10 was an informant. Fuzz radar is pretty good in this place, isn't it? Yeah, sure is. You ever been in this mine shaft before? I didn't even know it was here. Okay, what'll it be, gents? A couple of beers. You know what would happen if an inspector came in here with a light meter, don't you? Nothing. Too dark to read it. It's an old joke, though. Oh, sir, friends of mine, and one more the same. Joe, how are you, laddie? Bill? Calling a lot of attention to yourself, aren't you? Shows I got nothing to hide. Nobody's gonna badmouth the guy for having a friendly beer with a cop that busted him once. Twice. Whatever. Still, no need to give anybody the idea it's more than it seems. Right, laddie? Atmosphere. So now we get down to the nitty-gritty. Right. What's Lou Donovan doing these days, now that he's out of the joint? Nixie, no shotgunning this time. One race, one winner. Out of friendship. All right, what do you got? Al Baylor. Name's familiar. Never handled him, have we, Joe? No, but he's got a record for burglary. Been keeping out of sight lately. Not if you know where to look. You tell us. Behind the bar in the blue moon. Know where that is? Up in the hills off Barham. Wonder how anybody finds it, but I guess that's why it does such a good business. Great spot to take a girl you're not married to. Get it? Yeah, we get it. Now, what about Al Baylor? He's wearing a ring on his pinky. Only finger will fit. Woman's ring. Yeah, go on. Piece of jade with diamond leaves all around it. Real nice workmanship. Retail, two big ones, easy. How much is he asking? 300 bucks, cash sale, no refunds. All right, describe it again. Do you one better than that, laddie. You see it, you'll recognize it. One of a kind. Oh, just in case you want it, Baylor lives about a mile from the bar, 721 Glen Canyon. Stick that in your pocket. I'll be on my way before people think I'm keeping bad company. Hold on, didn't you forget something? Like what? How much? No charge. And since when did you start giving it away? What's wrong with you guys? I do a favor and you start looking for a kicker. Because it's free, it's no good, is that it? Why for free? Call it friendship. Not for Al Baylor. For you, an old Joe. Nothing against Baylor. Like what? Like maybe he beat you on a deal. Maybe. 
But you don't think I'm holding a grudge, do you? I don't know, aren't you? No, not since I talked to you. Ten thirty a.m. Bill and I returned to the office and began a detailed search of all recent burglary reports. By four o'clock, we had examined one hundred and fifty of them. There were that many left. You want to know what's wrong with these reports, Joe? Too many of them. They were written by detectives, not jewelers. What do you mean by that? Well, suppose a detective is describing an emerald ring. Does he call it an emerald ring? No, he doesn't. It's one ring, yellow metal, set with a green stone. Try this one. Missing items, one pair of ear clips, diamond cluster, value $485. One pink marquee diamond dinner ring, $800. One brooch, one lady's watch, one diamond studded poodle collar. For a dog? That's right, read on. One dome jade ring surrounded by gold leaves set with diamonds. Victim, Mrs. Eloise Shearing, Brentwood. Think this is the ring, Joe? You see what it's valued at there? $2,000. That's Black Tan's estimate. Well, he's a setup man. He's got to know jewelry. That he does. I'll bet he could give you a better appraisal than a lot of jewelers. Not only that. Yeah? He can do it at 50 feet. 4.20 p.m., we telephoned Mrs. Shearing and asked if we could come out and talk to her. She was just leaving the house, but when we told her it was about her recent burglary, she agreed to wait for us. 5 p.m., Mrs. Shearing was disappointed that we had not come to return her stolen jewelry. She informed us that the police department had given her neither protection nor good service. If you think I'm being unreasonable, Sergeant, just say so. But I must tell you, I pay an enormous amount of property taxes on this house. Yes, ma'am, we understand. Much higher than most people. And what happens? I'm gone two days, and $25,000 worth of jewelry vanishes. Now, something's got to be wrong. Yes, ma'am. All right, Sergeant, you tell me. What is it? Smart burglars and careless homeowners. I can't speak for the intelligence of burglars, but I can assure you I am not careless. You said you were away when the burglary occurred? Yes, I was in San Francisco that weekend. According to the report, the burglar came in that sliding glass door. Is that correct? Yes, and I can assure you it was carefully locked. And the house was empty at the time, was it? Yes, it was. Sergeant, what am I supposed to do? Stay home all the time and guard this place with a loaded shotgun? Joe, take a look. Here it is. That tiny little hole? Yes, ma'am. The burglar made it with a BB pistol held against the glass. Then he ran a loop of thin wire through the hole and hooked the catch. But that door was locked. I don't see what else I could have done. You might try laying a rod in the metal track at the bottom of those sliding doors. Even a length of broomstick will do. But a determined burglar would break the glass anyway, wouldn't he? Yes, ma'am, he might. But that could make enough noise to alert your neighbors. Where do you keep your jewelry, Mrs. Shearing? In a safe? Well, no. There's no safe in the house. I've thought of having one installed. But you've got a real good hiding place? Either it wasn't as good as I thought, or the thief had inside information. Could be both. There really aren't any hiding places, Mrs. Shearing. If you can think of it, so can a burglar. They know them all. In a drawer, behind books, in a grandfather's clock. Wasn't even hidden in this room. You have heat registers like this all over the house, do you? Most of the rooms, yes. Including your bedroom? Yes. Why? Woman over in Toluca Lake. She used to hide a box of her best jewelry in a register like that. The burglar found it. All right, Sergeant, you've convinced me they're smart, but I won't admit to carelessness. Anyway, didn't you say that they could have had inside information? Maybe. Now, did you tell anyone you'd be away for that weekend? No one. Absolutely not one person. You sure, Mrs. Shearing? It was an emergency. A girl I'd been at Mills with. Well, she needed a friendly shoulder, so I flew up on a minute's notice. Did you take the dog with you? No, of course not. I boarded her at the... Kennel. Yes, ma'am. So you told someone there when you were leaving, where to get in touch, and how long you'd be gone, right? But this place has taken care of Tutu all her life. I simply won't believe that of Dr. Giraud. Well, now, we can't prove it, Mrs. Shearing, but there's a possibility somebody at that kennel is a setup man. He knows you, he knows where you live, and most of all, he's seen you wearing jewelry. You don't wear your finest pieces to a dog kennel. Just one ring or a brooch. That means there's more at home. And a good setup man can tell you how much you paid for it. I'm never going to get any of it back, am I? There's a chance, Mrs. Shearing. We're working on a lead. It'd be a help if you'd give us a description of that diamond and jade ring. It's rather hard to describe, Sergeant. It's so unusual. My husband had it made for me in Italy the year he died. It was my favorite. Well, maybe you could make a drawing of it. Well, yes, I suppose I could do that. I'm not much of an artist. You see how thoroughly you've demolished me. Ma'am? I'm careless. Burglars are smarter. Even poor little Tutu's partly to blame. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Well, how's that? She was a loser, too. Beg your pardon? She lost her little dog collar, didn't she? <laughs> Thursday, 
August 4th. To obtain a search warrant, we had to present our information to the district attorney's office. This consisted of the burglary report describing the diamond and jade ring, the information given to us by Black 10, and the two sketches of the ring. We assured Assistant District Attorney Paul Lemus that Black 10 was an experienced and reliable informant. 9.30 a.m., after we had specified the area to be searched, a hillside house where Al Baylor lived, and described the property to be seized, Lemus agreed to issue a search warrant. 12.30 p.m., the warrant was prepared and handed to us. Next, we had to find a judge who would consider the evidence and sign it. 2 p.m., Judge Leroy Eichenberg signed the warrant with the usual instructions to return it along with any evidence seized, or a report on large items, within 10 days. 2.25 p.m., we went to Parker Center and met with Lieutenant Bowser. We filled him in on what we had so far. Bill and I roughed together a plan. We told him how we'd like to work it. All right, you got hot socks and you're ready to roll. What more do you want, my blessing? That's right, and a policewoman. Tell me why. Well, we've never drawn a sour one yet from Black Ten, but we'd still like to eyeball that ring. Unless it's been sold, he'd be wearing it tonight, won't he? Yeah, if he's working tonight. You mean you haven't checked that out? No, we haven't. We thought a stiff call might tip him off. Now, if he took down the shearing job, he's got 25 grand worth of hot jewelry. He figures to be pretty hinky. And he's an ex-con, Danny. He couldn't make us before we got close enough to see the ring. And then you want a policewoman who could pass for a swinger. Well, that'd help break the silhouette, wouldn't it? Now, she should have three things. I think I've got the girl for you, just out of the academy. Rita Hanley, young, pretty, she looks good out of uniform. Those are the three. Thirty p.m. While we waited for policewoman Hanley to join us, we went over the record of the bartender suspect at the Blue Moon. He'd been arrested four times for burglary and convicted once. On the other three occasions, he had been acquitted or released for insufficient evidence. The package also contained several mugshots of the suspect, Al Baylor, including one recent one. Sergeant Friday? Yes, ma'am, that's right. I was told to report to you for special duty. Policewoman Rita Hanley. How are you? This is my partner, Bill Gannon. How do you do? I'm Joe Friday. Nice to meet you. I hope this is all right. They told me I was to come on like a swinger. Well, you look the part to me. You're sure now? You look fine. Wouldn't you say so? Hmm? Wouldn't you say she looks right? Oh, it's not for me to say, Joe. What do you mean by that? Well, I just don't feel I should give an opinion. I'm not qualified. Well, since when has that stopped you? Now, Joe, you know me long enough to know I never pretend to know something if I don't know anything about it. You want to run that by again? All I'm saying is I yield to you on the subject of swingers. You do, huh? You're the expert, Joe. I'm a married man. All right. I say she looks fine. That's good enough for me. I'm glad that's settled. Lieutenant Bowser says you're just out of the academy? Three months. You're still a probationer? Yes, I am. Then you don't have much experience. As a swinger or a policewoman? This is no amateur we're going after. Baylor's done hard time. He could be rough. You mean it's dangerous? Not if you're careful. I will be. Don't worry about me. How old are you, Rita? About 22? About. Why? I was just thinking, at 22, you still got a lot of swinging ahead of you. <laughs> To carry out our plan with the least possible suspicion, it was agreed Rita Hanley and I would go into the Blue Moon first. Bill would wait 10 minutes and join us. After we had observed the ring and were satisfied that it was part of the loot burglarized from the Shearing home, we would make the arrest. 7 p.m. Good evening. Hello. Two of you? No, there'll be four of us if they can find the place. Look who's talking. Maybe they're already here. Do you have a Mr. Gannon here yet? I don't think so. No, not yet. If you care to wait in the bar, I'd be happy to show them in as soon as they get here. Fine, we'll do that. Thank you. <laughs> good evening, folks. What would you like? Double scotch in the rocks. A little rye on water, please. Very good. That wasn't right. I'm sorry. What? The drink. I made a mistake. You did fine. I didn't. I can tell from your expression. It wasn't you. Then what was it? He's not wearing that ring. <laughs> Al Baylor was not wearing the diamond and jade ring, or any other kind of ring. He might already have sold it. He might have made us coming in and gotten rid of it. Or he could have been tipped off in advance. If that were the case, it wasn't likely the search warrant would do us much good. 7.15 p.m., Bill joined us. 
Rita. Joe. How are you? Bill, where's Peggy? Oh, she's gonna be late. Said she'd grab a cab and join us as soon as she could get away. No, there's no use wasting a table then. Let me know when you're ready. We'll do that. Yes, sir. What'll it be? Bourbon and water. You people ready for another round? No, I'll make this one last. Didn't see a thing. No, not there. I'm beginning to wonder about that black tin. Never gave us a bad one before. He never gave us one for friendship before. Maybe changed his mind, huh? Made a phone call. Something like that. Well, if he did, we might as well turn around and go home. No, no, I think you're wrong there. Peggy's too nice a girl to pull a stunt like that. I don't know, Joe. Third time this month kind of shakes you up. Yeah, well, maybe that's her whole idea, huh? My, what a lovely ring. <laughs> You've got an eye for quality, miss. That's a real nice piece of imperial jade. May I see it? Sure. In case you're interested, it's for sale. I can give you a real good deal. Isn't it beautiful, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, that looks okay to me. What do you think? I tell you what, Joe, if the price is right, this is it. $300, but I'll have to have cash. Tell you what, I might shave that price a little, but it's still got to be cash. All right, fella. You're under arrest. What are you talking about? What's the matter with you guys? This is stolen property. Well, that's news to me. I don't know anything about that. I bought it in good faith. Who from? A couple of guys. What are their names? If they told me, I don't remember. Look at your receipt. Come on, you know there's no receipt. Not on a deal like this. I'll give it to you straight. I took this guy. He was in an accident, see? Nothing big, but he bent somebody's fender, and he didn't want it to go through his insurance company. Well, he offered the other guy a couple of bills to forget it, only he didn't have the cash, so he sold me the ring, okay? Okay. Now, let's just leave quietly. You're taking the rest of the night off. Well, this is gonna cost me. Look, I'm an ex-con. You guys know that. You wouldn't be in here leaning on me. There aren't many jobs for a guy like me. If I lose this spot, I got no place to go. Oh, yes, you have. was reminded of his rights and the search warrant was shown to him. Then we drove up the canyon about a mile to his house. We started our search. Bill checked the bedrooms. They were upstairs. We checked for loose floorboards, crawl holes, and vents. We examined the closets, open boxes, drawers, luggage, and felt the pockets of old suits. We searched the furniture. 8.30 p.m. 9.30 p.m. We continued the search. Bill found nothing in the bedrooms. We were certain that the missing jewelry was not in the house. Bill searched the garage and the suspect's car without success. No luck. If the stuff's on the premises, he's really found a place to stash it. That he has. What do you want to do? Well, he's got a record and he had stolen property on him. Let's book him. And he'll tell the judge he bought the ring from a stranger and we get thrown out in preliminary. Yeah, I know. So what's that give us? The jade ring. Mm hmm Worth $2,000, did not she say? That's what she said. Only leaves us $23,000 short. All right, fella, let's go. Where are we going? Downtown. You're gonna book me? That's right. Look, I told you how it was. I bought the ring. You search the pad, you know there's nothing else here? Because I didn't get anything else. Who did you buy it from? I don't know. Just a guy came in off the highway. Look, is that all it's gonna take? Just finger this guy and I'm clear? You suddenly remember a name? Not me. I think he mentioned it once, but it's gone. I was thinking of Jan. She was there drooling over the ring when I bought it. All right, who's Jan? Jan Petrie, hostess at the Blue Moon. Why don't I call her? Maybe she'll remember. One of you can listen on the extension right over there. All right. Jan, it's Al. Guess you heard what happened tonight. Yeah, I was busted. You know the ring I bought from that guy last week? Turns out it was hot. They're gonna book me unless I can come up with his name. Do you remember it? Yeah, that's right, George something. But what was the last name? Neither can I. Well, I guess that's it. No, not a thing, unless you want to keep an eye on the place for me. You know, take in the papers, feed the fish, get the mail. What? Yeah, I guess so, but hold on. You taking me in right now? That's right. Yeah, right away. No, honey, you couldn't get here in time. What? Yeah, I'll leave the lights on for you. You just take care of things here. Right, thanks. Anything on her end? No, she played it straight. Coming over here, though. Tonight? Yeah, in about 20 minutes. What for? Feed the fish, make sure everything's buttoned up. Think we ought to wait for her? Yeah, I do. What do you think? We haven't got much now. Rita. 
Yes, Joe. Do you want to get our unit out of sight? Park it down the street. When do you want me back in here? Keep your eye on the front door. We'll flip the porch light on and off. Right. Stay where you are. I thought we were going downtown. Not for a while. What are you going to do, search the place again? We might. That's your warrant, but you're just using up a lot of time and energy. We got the energy, Banner. That's so? And right now, you're fixed pretty good for time, aren't you? for Jan Petrie, the hostess from the Blue Moon, to arrive. We warned Al Baylor not to make a sound or to reveal our presence in any way. We waited 15 minutes. No one came. Nothing happened. We continued to wait. 10.45 p.m. officer now you just stand still oh, the idea you nearly gave me heart failure where's al right here al, what's going on you said they were taking you in sorry honey looks like you walked into it into what i don't understand any of this i'll hit the porch light for rita right all right miss petrie what are you doing here well, i just came to feed al's fish to make sure everything was locked up what do you feed him diamonds i don't know about any of this forget it baby we're nailed just leave me out i don't know anything about this well, now, maybe what's in this bag will help clear things up for you, lady. You never would have found that stuff on your own. Is that right? You never thought to look in there, did you? You pulled the joint apart, but you never put your hand in that tank. I'll tell you something else. It's a good thing you didn't. Is that right? You better believe it. You know what kind of fish those are? Well, suppose you tell us. Piranhas. Red piranhas. Meat eaters. They'll attack anything if they're hungry enough. And I make sure they always are. Feed them only once a week raw hamburger. If you'd suck your arm in that water with the teeth they got, they'd have cleaned it off clear down to the bone. It's illegal to have those fish, isn't it? If you get caught with piranhas, it'll cost you a 50 to a $500 fine. Well, don't you worry about it. What? We're not going to press that charge. How'd you do? Not too bad. Looks like we caught our limit. scene is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On September 2nd, trial was held in Department 183, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of violating Section 459 PC burglary which is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than five years. Jan Petrie turned state's evidence and all charges against her were dropped. 